Hello. The date is March 4th, 2017. It's a Saturday night, and I'm going to be doing a video of another occultation of Aldebaran. This time it's a little bit special. This is a grazing occultation off the north edge of the moon, as you can see. I'm using my 80 millimeter APO triplet for this on the CEM 60 mount. I'm uh, not at home. I'm in uh, I'm in southern Rhode Island, South Kingstown to be exact. It's about 11 p.m. cold and windy night, about 15 degrees. And the wind is blowing pretty hard. It's about zero with the wind chill. Uh, I'm uh, <laughs> I'm not really here. I'm doing this audio several days later. The wind was blowing so hard that it uh, it messed up the audio recording. So I'm I'm dubbing this. I'm about 75 miles from home. I'm lucky to be this close, actually, considering how uh, how things go with grazes. Here's a map of the the northern edge of the Gray's Path, uh, superimposed on the on the country, and you can see it. Uh, most of the country is seeing a, a straight occultation, but there's a, a thin line that cuts through southern New England. Here's a map showing the, the path through Connecticut, and Rhode Island, and off to sea. And here's a map of the path going through South Kingston and Narragansett. I picked this particular location because uh, on the the uh, Sky and Telescope uh, website for this thing, there was a commentary by a fellow for call, uh, named is Frank uh, Frank Reed. He's a uh, he's a uh, director of the planetarium down in Mystic, Connecticut, and and he recommended this location, and uh, so I I checked it out, and it looks uh, it looked pretty good. So here it is uh, at night. You can see the the moon down there in the in the south. It's a cold, cold, cold night. Now there are forty nine uh, occultations of Aldebaran that started back in twenty fifteen. It's going to continue till about uh, the end of twenty eighteen. That seems like a lot of occultations until you uh, until you think about it. I mean. Uh, Let's let's say there's 50 occultations in this series, or so at least half of them are going to happen on the other side of the planet when the moon is down. So that takes you down to 25, and then and then uh, you figure at least half of them are going to be in daylight. It's not like it's impossible to see a first magnitude star in daylight, but uh, it's it isn't practical. I've I've tried to look at Jupiter in in the middle of the day and. It's it's pretty tough, and that's minus two. So here's a star that's uh, plus one. It's pretty impossible. So there's another half that's gone, and you're down to 12. And then you add the weather factors into it. At my location, uh, I'm lucky to get one clear night out of three. So there you go. You start with 50 occultations. You're, you're lucky to see maybe four or five in the whole three years. As the time of this grazing event approached, uh, two other observers arrived, and I uh, was joined by Frank Reed himself, the aforementioned uh, planetarium director who recommended this site. He came, and also a, a fellow name was Paul. He was one of Frank's students in a celestial navigation course. And so the three of us watched this uh, event unfold. Uh, the two of them had only binoculars, so they were they were able to look over my shoulder and at the video camera as uh, events happened here. So let, let me switch to the the live audio of the the events that took place. The the, the grazing event lasted about a minute and a half. Right now, yeah. But we should see some actual blinkouts pretty soon. Have you seen these before? <laughs> yeah. 
I've got the last two. Uh, I got the last two El Debron occultations on my YouTube channel. Oh, oh. But the, oh, oh, there we go. There, there was that, one right there. That was one the first hill. Okay, we'll get another one in a few seconds if I can remember the profile. The profile. Oh, you actually oh, know the profile. There we go. There She's out. Oh, it was a gradual fade too. Yeah. El Debron is big. Yep. It's a red giant. Red giant. Yep. yep. It's, uh, I think it's like point, point oh two seconds of arc. So it's oh, really? Size. Back. I think that. Oh, oh there it's out again. Oh. Oh, this is great. Oh, we've seen several. There, there. there it goes. All right. That's nice. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Hey, it hey, actually hey, be the last hey, peak, hey, I think. Oh, so, cool. you actually can look up the profile that you get the job. Yeah, they had it on the IOTA, yeah. IOTA website. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. The back seat. yeah. There was that one, one mountain at the last part there. I think that must be it. It's been long enough now. Uh, just check that. Okay, let's go home. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, that's great. That's the great thing about this tonight. We didn't have to freeze really. Just come out for a minute. And... Well, speak for yourself. <laughs> out, out again? Just went out again? Out yeah, again? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's wow. the peak then. Yeah, because it's wow. 21.15 right now. So that oh, should be the end of it right oh, there. This is, this is so much better than some eighth magnitude star. <laughs> yeah, right? No, it's beautiful. Oh, I was telling him, I used to do this with David Dunham back in the 60s. Really? Really? Wow. Yeah. No, no I, you know, it's, it's kind of sad that this isn't, has, has no scientific value anymore, but it's, no, I, I know. it's still cool. I mean, that's cool. That's it's really still cool. very cool. <laughs> now we uh, continued on for a, a few minutes there, and it was so cold, we, we soon packed up and left. By 11.30, we were all out of there and on our way home. Now we're talking about profiles here. Let's talk about the the profiles. Here's a shot of the uh, the profiles that were published on the IOTA site, and uh, down at the bottom you can see the the northern lunar profile for the uh, for our location down in Rhode Island. Well, what I thought I'd do is uh, is correlate what I was able to uh, to uh, to do with this is give it some body and then. And then I actually took some timing of the events. The red line represents the uh, the appearance of Aldebaran, and the gaps indicate when it was uh, disappeared. So I thought, can I correlate these these two pieces of information? And I had the same scale time scale here, so I overlaid one on the onto the other. And and look at this. This absolutely blew me away. It is dead accurate. It is totally dead accurate. The profile matches exactly my timings. This is just in, in, incredible. In the old days, you know, you're lucky to be within th two or three miles, but this was perfect. Everything was perfect. Well, that was a good one. That was a good one for sure. So keep uh, keep looking at my channel here for another occultation. It will probably be another Aldebaran, the way things are going until September of 2018. All right, signing off.